I have taken some leftover uh, ground beef that I had cooked for the kids yesterday with a lot of seasoning in it. And I took the leftover and added half box of of spinach, organic baby spinach. So I, that's gonna be my breakfast. I think that looks pretty good. I keep harvesting these yard long beans. They're awesome. They taste like, their, their texture is like uh, asparagus. And when you eat them, they 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 are like asparagus too. They uh, they're actually neat, their nickname is asparagus beans, and they're much creamier than a regular green bean, which I love. Regular green beans might have like a fuzzy feeling, but these don't have that. They they are smooth. Their skin is smooth like a. Oh, I don't know what else I could liken it to. Like a tomato skin? <laughs> I don't know. It doesn't have any fuzz. They're shiny. Except when the when the beans get older, they are less smooth. They're more rough. But they still don't really have a furry feeling. Um, this one, um, I debated leaving it there to go to seed you know, to use for seeds for next year, but I decided to pick this one. I have a few more that are even fatter than that, so I will leave them and keep them and save them for seeds. That's one, one reason why I wanted these beans, not only because they're my favorite eating bean, but also because it's easy to, um, it's like an heirloom seed, so it's easy to go keep the seeds and raise them again the following year. They are um, black. The little beans that grow inside are black. So these are the ones my husband gave me last year. They are related to yard long beans because they are long, but they are also um, a kind of different variety of yard long beans. And I'm really enjoying them. And uh, I let these turn uh, dry on the, on the plants so I can save the seeds and I have a few more that I'm saving and letting dry on the plant on purpose so I can save the seeds for next year. Um, I'm happy, I, I enjoy doing this kind of uh, work, um, saving seeds and growing them again the following year. That's what I, I do with my hyacinth beans. I learned to do that from my mom because hyacinth beans are, are like, not really edible, but they are like, um, a special bean that smells good and it draws helps draw pollinators to your yard or to your garden and um, I will be saving some of those too but I'm happy to have these so I can grow them again next year inshallah pick up ones that fail but one bean has quite a few um, dry beans in it for seeds it has it has one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen and I dropped two so that was at least 15 seeds in one in one uh, bean so if I save four or five, I'm gonna have a row of them next year, inshallah, if God lets me. So I have a nice little bunch of seeds here, but I'm, I'm trying to have some more because I like these beans. They're pretty easy to grow and, and uh, well, yeah, that's a good one. It just has some of the dry uh, pod stuck to it and that's okay. Can't wait, can't wait, can't wait to grow some more. Alrighty then. I'm looking for a pumpkin bread or pumpkin cupcake recipe. Um, okay. Check this out.
I didn't rest much yesterday. I'm used to sleeping a lot on Saturday. I'm thinking I might go sleep again. If I want to find a pumpkin recipe, there's a blueberry cream muffin recipe. That sounds good. Uh, Maple nut coffee twist. Mm, that sounds interesting. Maple nut coffee twist. Monkey bread, quick sticky buns, uh, apple fritters. That's my mom's recipe. This book, this is a community recipe book. The women in my community do recipe books every so often. This one is a family recipe uh, of my great grandmother Martin's. Uh, her uh, name was her first name gosh I can't even remember her first name she was uh, grandmother she was grandma Martin she was her name <laughs> she was great grandma Martin I don't know her first name anymore what was her first name just says the Martin family and all the granddaughters of that family Mary, her name, her name was Mary. Yeah, Mary, her last name was Zimmerman and her husband's name was Ivan W. Martin. So this book is from the grandchildren of those, of that family, of that couple. Mm -hmm. So all these names are names of people in, um, uh, in, the Martin family uh, grandchildren. Now, I looked at breads and rolls. Let me look in cakes and cookies. Maybe they have a pumpkin cake recipe I could turn into muffins. What's on page 69? Did you finish your smoothie? Yeah, here. Maybe I will find a pumpkin cake recipe. Let me see. There's Lazy Wife's Chocolate Cake. That's the one I learned to make for my dad because he was allergic to milk and eggs for a very long time. So I used to make that when I was probably Zakia's age, <laughs> 10 or 11 years old. I used to make it all the time. Now, uh, let's see. I can find your pumpkin cake recipe. That I can turn I put strawberries muffin. and lemon in my smoothie. In your smoothie. Does it taste good? Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah, you put sugar in? Mm -hmm. Okay. There's Dutch apple cake. Uh, I'm looking for pumpkin. Apple cake, zucchini cake, sugarless spice cake. Mm -hmm. They put pear sauce in it to make it sweet diabetics I guess but it has wheat flour in so it's not that good zucchini cake there's a, three different recipes of zucchini cake <laughs> uh, oatmeal spice cake Kool-Aid cupcakes applesauce glaze for cakes brown butter icing and different uh, frosting and fudge icing and caramel icing now it comes to cookies and I didn't find a pumpkin recipe um, although I know every family has had it before there's some pumpkin bars that's not what I want now I'll check the oldest book known to the Mennonite community which is the Pennsylvania Dutch cooking uh, book we used to call it the Mennonite cookbook and it said that on the front but now they changed the name Pennsylvania Dutch cooking. Um, it's the same book. They just have a different title. Well, here it says a Mennonite community cookbook. So it still says it then, I guess. Mm. 
Okay. Breads. I'm gonna see if there's a pumpkin bread recipe. I'm gonna eat. They have pictures of Mennonite women <laughs> drawn in here. There's a woman making her bread dough in this big wooden tub thing. That's a thing we don't know anything about because no one makes their bread in, in that size of a quantity. She has all that bread over there. The table and the doughs in there. Okay, these breads. Um, Bobot, which is a favorite of the Russian Mennonites. Um, let's see. Russian Easter bread. some biscuit recipes. I have made this, these biscuits a lot of times. They're very good. Butter scotch rolls, cornbread, apple cornbread, cinnamon rolls from pastry dough. Um, skeleton pumpkin. I like to look through these old recipe books. There's a carrot nut bread. Southern spoon bread, potato donuts, uh, puff ball and quick tea donuts, uh, crawlers. I don't think anyone I know has ever made crawlers because I had to taste crawlers from a grocery store bakery. So that recipe is probably very, very old, from like a hundred years ago or more. Russian pancakes, one egg, one cup flour, one cup milk, and one half teaspoon salt. Apple waffles, green waffles, gingerbread waffles. And then come the soups. Here's another Mennonite woman cooking at a stove, wood stove. And her coffee percolator is on the, on the stove. Uh, let me see. Oh, let me see the other. I have to look in the cakes now. Cakes and frostings. Yeah, that's where I will look now. Page 201. Another Mennonite lady. <laughs> I don't know who the artist is. Maybe it says so. says it somewhere. <sighs> My aunt uh, Helen had me make this cake recipe before busy day cake. That was a long time ago. I don't know how old we were. We were pretty small. And her daughter, Martha, my cousin Martha, always made perfect little round cookies and, and mine were all uneven and different <laughs> shapes and sizes. <laughs> and she made a perfectly uniform round cookies. <sighs> I couldn't believe I couldn't get it. I couldn't believe that someone could make such perfect, perfect and perfectly uniform round cookies. <laughs> I was embarrassed and I was also shamed. I was shamed by the other women because mine were sloppy. They said they were sloppy. I, I didn't, it wasn't for lack of trying. I couldn't get it. I don't have that coordination, so Pineapple sponge cake, Russian sponge cake, cakes for children's parties. I did not find any. There are banana cupcake recipe here. I haven't found a pumpkin one yet. 
have all different kinds. They make a lot of things with pumpkin, but spice cupcakes. The spice cupcake sounds like one that would have pumpkin in it, but that one doesn't. Cookies. Well, I guess that's a possibility. Right. I think if I don't find a pumpkin recipe, pumpkin cupcake or cake recipe, I'm going to follow the um, banana cake recipe or banana cupcake recipe because. They are similar in texture when they're, when they're smoothed and pureed. I believe that's what I'm gonna end up doing. Yes, I'm going to use this recipe with the pumpkin puree if I don't find any. And instead of vanilla, I'm going to put pumpkin pie spice in it. because I have some in the cabinet, pretty sure. <laughs> this is gonna be my bookmarker. It, it's a page from a book I got from the Dollar Tree once. It says, good thing one of you is a doctor because you're gonna need medical attention. <laughs> the cat's snarling. She's angry or maybe she just doesn't like the vet. <laughs> That's a Shakespeare kitty does not approve of the foul grammar. <laughs> I'm gonna use that page for uh, a bookmark. And then I'm gonna keep looking. Uh, molasses crinkles were popular, are a very popular um, fall cookie at um, in the Mennonites uh, community. I know we've had those. They're delicious. They're kind of like a snickerdoodle, but with molasses. You use uh, four tablespoons, but you have to use the black molasses. But I could also use date molasses and they would be very similar. My husband has date molasses in the house all the time. And I could do this for the family. My kids wouldn't know that it's date molasses because you add cinnamon and ginger and cloves and, and all the good de delicious spices. They wouldn't know that was date molasses. Um, yeah, I didn't find any pumpkin um, cupcake or cake or bread recipe in here. Monkey faces. Use preceding recipe. What recipe is that? Oh, raisin field cookies. Yuck. But what you do is, before putting the top round of dough on the cookie, use a thimble to cut eyes and mouth. <laughs> do not cut through dough, but press deep enough so that the shape will remain in the baked cookie. Oh, this was grandmother's way of decorating cookies. <laughs> and they had a raisin filling. Oh, that sounds fun. Like a fun way of inspiring kids to eat a raisin cookie. <laughs> but when I was a kid, we ate raisins. We, we liked raisins. But my kids are so picky now. They wouldn't eat them. <sighs> okay, there are desserts. They come next. There's pumpkin custard. And I'm sure there's pumpkin pie and pumpkin this and pumpkin that in the dessert level. Uh, in the dessert chapter. There are pecan squares. I bet they'd be pretty good. Uh, banana pudding. Let me see. Rhubarb tapioca. I used to love rhubarb when my mom made things with rhubarb and strawberry mixed together. Grape nut pudding. Doesn't sound very appetizing, but I bet we ate it before. There's the pumpkin custard. 
There's pineapple meringue pudding. And they sure did make a lot of puddings for dessert. Steamed and baked puddings. There's bread pudding, carrot pudding, different kinds, fig pudding, date pudding. I bet that would be delicious if we if I used um, medjool dates. The dates that I grew up with were hard, dried out little things, like so hard you could barely bite through them. But the dates I know of now are delicious. They are sticky and uh, caramely, not like they taste like caramel and very sweet and soft. There's an apple brown Betty recipe and a baked apple recipe, caramel apples. Oh, there are many apple recipes here. Pages and pages of apple recipes. Apple goodie, apple grunt, uh, apple pen dowdy. I don't know what that is, but I could read that and try it sometime, I guess. See if my family likes it. My kids love apples. Blackberry cobbler. I've had that before. Uh, blueberry roly poly. Hmm, interesting. All right. Uh, rhubarb crunch I've had before, for sure. Rhubarb pudding, yes, I've had all that. And rhubarb upside down cake. I want to raise rhubarb. But I don't want to start it from seed because it takes so long. Marshmallow whip. Hmm, interesting. Then they have miscellaneous refrigerator desserts. Yes, I know all about uh, refrigerator uh, icebox cakes. <laughs> Those are good. Pond lilies. Interesting. But I'm not going to find anything here about pumpkin, except I know I'm going to find pumpkin pies. I could make a pumpkin pie, but... I was looking for pumpkin muffins. Mm, yeah. Spiced cider. All right. So I'm, I did not find any pumpkin muffin or pumpkin bread recipe in there. Now this one, it is kind of dirty. Need some wiping. It's a book I've had around a while, and for some reason the flies liked crawling on it when they came in. Let me see if I can find pumpkin bread in here. This is a newer one, a newer um, recipe book. Everyone I know loves soft pretzels. They're a big thing in, in old order Mennonite cultures. There's a banana nut bread. I could use that recipe also to make the uh, pumpkin cupcakes, muffins, whatever you want to call them. Oh, well, there's a pumpkin chip muffin. There it is. Uh, 16 ounces of pumpkin. That would be two cups. Two cups of pumpkin puree. Four eggs. Two cups of sugar. That's a lot of sugar. I'd go with half that sugar. Uh, yeah, half of that sugar would be enough. Because if I'm adding the... They added chocolate chips, but I want to add cinnamon chips. This is exactly what I was looking for. I'm going to add cinnamon chips instead of chocolate. Yep, that's it. I found my recipe. See, this is what women did before Pinterest <laughs> and YouTube. My boys went to Target for some headphones 
and they found these coffee bombs uh, with three grams of sugar per serving, delightful coffee snacks. They're vanilla latte flavor, and they are, where does it say it? Keto friendly. The boy said, we didn't even realize they were keto friendly until after we bought them, and they were eating them like M&Ms. <laughs> so I got a taste because they're keto and they're good, really good, and they found them at Target. I guess they would be in the checkout line where all the snacks and candy bars and things are. But yum, they were good and delicious. Now my son picked me up some cinnamon chips, Hershey's brand cinnamon chips from Walmart to, to put in, in the pumpkin muffins. All right. So it says, eat the eggs. We add the sugar and the pumpkin and the oil. No, not at the moment. Sit on a chair and eat nicely with your dad. Okay. Huh? Why do we the water? Was it me? No, it wasn't me. Okay. You hurt yourself. There's the sugar one. I'm not going to put four cups. I'm not going to double it. I'm just going to put time and a half. Because double would be, I think, too sweet. Did you? Yeah. Oh well. Okay. Now, mix the sugar and the eggs. Where did you mama feel? Who did you see that, huh? Okay. Okay. Mom, who's Well, it doesn't look like mine. It doesn't look like yours. So who is it? Mom, who is it? I don't know. Oh. You picked that one? Huh? Why you little motherfucker give you half that one? Okay, here I go adding a quart of pumpkin because it's a full quart. This is going to be 48 muffins. There's the sugar and the pumpkin and the eggs. Now I will put the oil in. Oh, she's going to be a full bowl. Well, It'll be three cups of oil. <laughs> it's a lot of oil. One, two, three. I might have to transfer it to a bigger bowl. I'm doubling it. But a person could actually make make just one recipe or or even half it. So there's all that. Now I'm going to start adding the spices. Um, it says to use uh, two teaspoons. What? So we're going to double it and even put a little extra. I said 50. So two tablespoons. I said 50. Is plenty of pumpkin pie spice. Yeah. I don't even have that much. I said 50. Oh, good thing I have. Um, I don't even have two tablespoons. I thought I would, but I finished it up.
I think that's a, that is a uh, Dollar Tree spice container. I haven't even opened it, it's still in the box. So I could just add some plain cinnamon too. I'm going to put pumpkin pie spice on my list. Mm, nice. Now, it asked for two teaspoons of baking soda, so that means four. Um, I might have to open another box of baking soda. That's only about one. I'll open my other box. Okay, the recipe says cinnamon, and since I only had half of it in pumpkin pie spice. I'm going to put the other half in cinnamon. Although I would have liked the whole thing to be pumpkin pie spice. This will be just fine and lovely. Okay. Alrighty then. Why would you want popcorn? A very little bit. Okay, you put a, it said one teaspoon, so two teaspoons of salt. Now, I have everything in, wait, I didn't put all the baking soda in yet. In a baking soda box, I put it in the Ziploc bag so it stays fresh because baking soda can get stale or it can take smells into it or other tastes and smells. Won't be nice, so I put it in a Ziploc bag to preserve its freshness because it comes in a cardboard box which can really retain other smells. So, yeah, start with flour. It, it says three cups for one recipe, so that will be six. I'm going to use, um, oops, one, two, that's two. <laughs> I prom probably should go ahead and get my bigger bowl. So this bowl was going to be big enough, but I miscalculated. So. We're gonna take real classes tomorrow. No, because everybody else is gonna deal with you. Oh, that's okay. You you go and make up some work, okay? Well, I have nothing to make up, but I'm still gonna do the extras. Okay, that's a good idea. Okay, good girl, good boy. What? Wow. <laughs> you really are Joe Biden. <laughs> I'm not. There, it's getting all mixed. That was just two cups. I never put the quite as much flour in as they asked for. So, I'm gonna move on 
two more, maybe three, and that will be the end of it. I'm not gonna put as much. I always put a little bit less flour because I don't like things that are too stiff. There. See if I can do this. I'm playing <laughs> a chicken here. Muffin chicken. If it's too liquidy, I'll add another bit of flour, but when I get this mixed in, I'll check and see how it looks. Okay. I'm playing chicken here. I guess I like the idea of taking a risk. <laughs> I don't think that's going to be uh, enough flour. I think it might need some more. What are you doing? It looks a little bit thin. When you go outside, they make sure you buy it. Well, do you think I've run my game of chicken? <laughs> Alrighty then. I'm adding about a three fourth cup more. <laughs> I have bigger bowls, but I just don't want to dirty another one. If I can win this game of chicken, it will be all right. <laughs> enough for 48 muffins meaning I'm gonna fill my pans four times <laughs> that's okay no I have two pans so twice yes, I have two 12 uh, cup pans and 
that means I can make up make two batches and then two more dozen at a time I'm gonna go turn that oven on all right the pan is here the cups are here I'm wondering if I can possibly I'm just gonna drop the cinnamon chips they look just like chocolate chips but they're maybe slightly more orange than chocolate chips um, close over here I have two pans and they're Rachel Ray pans I got a few years ago um, I cannot make muffins without paper because they just stick. They just stick to the pan. So I got these parchment paper cups from from uh, Amazon. They're yeah. brown paper. And they don't stick, they don't get stuck on the um, muffin or cupcake like um, some other brands do. I, I don't like the, the brand from Dollar Tree at all because they just stick to the cupcake so bad. So um, these are easy to peel off. Huh? On the sofa with the other laundry probably. So I have to preheat the oven to 400 degrees and start putting some things away. Throwing away emptied containers uh, until the oven warmed up. All right. Okay. I'm going to use this one fourth cup dipper and I'm going to put one dipper in each muffin. And see how that works out if that's enough or if they need a drop a drop more I feel closer to my uh, Mennonite relatives when I cook their recipes <laughs> because they have signed their names next to the recipes and then I think about each one when I read their recipes. Mama. What? This double brown sugar one feels weird. Did, did, did you buy a different like thing? No. I thought it was his mommy. Hmm. You got the protein one. That ain't protein. Is that right? It says protein. It, wow. it should make it full longer. Hey, don't you touch these more. Chuck these cinnamon chips. Mm. I have a feeling that those cinnamon chips are going to be a win. In in the okay, I'm going to just see which ones seem like they need to be topped off a little. working at it you'll figure it out so I'm gonna drop them in I don't care if they stay on top or they go down in it whichever way it works out is fine the kids are gonna like it either way I'm just taking a pinch and adding them to the top of each one some of them will have slightly more and some slightly less because uh, I do, I'm not able, my brain doesn't know how to measure things the same every time. <laughs> Unless I had like a teaspoon or something that I used. And it would be mostly the same. A lot of recipes I just eyeball. 
<laughs> because my measurement is that way anyway. Okay, it looks like they all have enough. Uh, Somebody singing. That's always a good sound. <laughs> He's my marching band kid. Ever since he was very little, he liked to whistle. And he, when he was real little, he didn't really whistle a tune. He just whistled wildly and out of tune and all that. But as soon as he discovered the marching band at school, that was it. He, uh, he will go to school uh, better than he ever did in his life, ever since he got in the marching band. used to be so hard to get him to go to school. So I'm grateful for whatever it is that makes him want to go. And now he can uh, whistle in a tune because he has a great teacher. He, uh, I remember in one video uh, when he was about six years old, he was whistling in, in the way he did back then. I never told him to stop because he's a kid and he's acting like a kid. He's acting age appropriate, age appropriate and he's not doing anything wrong. So I always let him whistle and some people took a offense to that and gave me some nasty comments told me I'm a weak parent <laughs> well guess what that kid is now a marching band student and he's the he, he was the lead saxophonist and now he's playing the tuba he can play whatever he wants because he has that skill of whistling. If I told him to be quiet and and acted like his whistling was wrong or bad in some way, he might not have wanted to be in the band. And uh, he doesn't like white marching bands. He likes the black ones <laughs> because they have, uh, they just have that, um, they have a flare, a special flare. He says he wants to go to college on a band scholarship. He wants to go to a university that has a famous band. So he's in middle school, he could change his mind a lot of times. But for now, I let him be, let him talk, let him think about what he wants to do. Because he, I let him whistle when he was a kid, when other people told me I'm a weak parent. You take your comment and shove it where the sun don't shine because I'm his mom 
and God made me his mom and knew I was the right person to be his mom. And then, Yeah, I remember that comment when when he told me, Mom, I'm going to be in the band. I'm going to play the saxophone. Anyone who's a parent, don't let anyone tell you how to parent your child. You know your kid. Second one's ready for the for the uh, oven, and did you see what I did? I I helped them to get to go down into the uh, batter because I wasn't I'm not sure. Well, I could mix the rest in with this batter, but I was afraid I would lose the game of chicken <laughs> if I put all the all the um, chips in there at once. There, I'm just gonna go ahead and dump the rest of them in because I have room now. It will be much more simple that way. There. Alrighty then. Uh, I'm going to put some butter in my butter bell because I want to. I put about an, um, an inch of water or half an inch of water down there. It doesn't need to be very full, it just needs a little. And that will seal the butter and keep it fresh. And I'm using this Irish butter from uh, Aldi. So I'm going to use that. Um, it's very nice butter, very oily butter. So, I'm going to put half in at a time because I'm not sure if this thing will hold the whole thing or not. So, first I put half and push it down in there. and make it real. I've watched videos of people doing this before. So this is my most recent butter bill. So I got, um, this is the second container of muffins. Um, the first one is there with two layers in it. done and I'm not sealing it until they're completely cool but they're done in the there's another pan in the oven to fill that one up and there are the muffins
Oh, done. This is the last tray.